I feel like the web animation industry is quite new and so finding resources for it is not that obvious. And so in this video, I'll show you guys all the resources that I used in the past and that I'm currently using to learn about web animation. I'll go over some basic ones that you probably already know and then I'll drop some hidden gems that hopefully you don't know about. I'll go over some websites, tools, specific people and even books that help me get to where I am today. So let's start with the basic ones. First, we have code drops. CodeDrops is by far the number one resource for creative development on the web. It's been here for a while. And honestly, if you don't know about it, I'm quite shook. You need to check it out. So CodeDrops is basically a collective with a bunch of creators that teach people how to make web animation. One thing that I like to do on CodeDrops is to dig into all of the different people that create tutorials there. And I go into their profile, their Twitter, and I try to find all the different resources that they put out there. And honestly, when I dig into their profile, that's where I find the best resources. However, the bad thing about CodeDrops is it's a bit old. And so some of the content is outdated, but not everything. And how I treat it basically is like an entry point where I can dig into some of the top players of the industry and then I can analyze how they structure their animations and how they operate in general and that way I can really learn from like the masters really. Number two is Twitter. Now Twitter is the number one social media out there for creative web animation. There's just nothing else that compares to it. If you're looking for the community, it's out there. Now also if you're interested in web design and also web animation, the two combined, then you can also check Instagram. It's also pretty good, but I think Twitter is the best. And similar to Code Drops, I use it to find the top dogs of the industry and see what people are doing really and see how they operate, see the kind of uh, animations that they're making. And I always try to remember to not compare myself too much because sometimes I just look at what people are doing and I'm like, oh my God, they're, they're doing like such nice things. And then I compare myself and then I feel like crap. So yeah, just don't fall into that trap and you'll be fine. And at number three, we have 3JS Journey. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any courses to suggest to you guys because the courses that I did personally was like five years ago on the React. And nowadays, all of that content is just outdated. And so I can't recommend those courses to you. But if there is one course that I would recommend for you, it is 3JS Journey. It's probably the course that has the craziest uh, quality to price ratio. I think it has something like 60 hours of content for a hundred bucks. It's absolutely a no brainer in my opinion to buy that course. And what's great about it, uh, sometimes people confuse 3JS for like pure 3D stuff, but even if you're not interested in doing 3D and you just want to create advanced 2D animations with shaders, for example, then you can use that course, learn from that course. There's a lot of content about it and it's just great. And by the way, I'm trying to match the quality of his course with my course. And so that's why it's taking a bit of a long time. My apologies. Number four, is the creation websites. These websites are the best free resource that we can use as developers to basically train our eyes to look at great animations. They're free and basically I have a bookmark with a massive list. I'll put it in the description below if you're interested, but I highly recommend you have your own list and you take a look at the websites that come out just to train your eyes to see what's a great website, what's a great animation and to see what's possible to make as well. So yeah, basically create your own list of creation websites and take a look at them weekly and see what's coming out and basically train your eyes. Highly recommend doing that. And at number six, we have the developer inspection tool. Now this one is not officially a resource, but if you know how to use it, you can basically treat any website as a resource uh, because of that inspector tool. So I basically use this guy a lot when I'm trying to deconstruct or understand how an animation is made on the website. So I just take a look at how they structure their HTML, how they do their CSS, and I can basically use that tool to transform a website into a playground or like into a sandbox where I can learn like a kid how things were made. And if you're really good, I know some people do that. You can even dig into the JavaScript of a website and put it in like chat GPT so it can reorder it. And then you can straight take a look at how like an animation was made in JavaScript. And so to me, that tool is incredibly underrated and you can use it to learn a lot if you know how to use it. And now I wanna take a look at some people that highly inspire me that also create content online that we can all learn from. So the number one is Yuri. And this guy, I'll be honest, is the guy that inspired me to create my own YouTube channel. 
and he's like a super OG and he's an absolute beast in everything that is WebGL. I personally think that his channel is highly underrated and I think it might be because he's Russian or maybe because he creates live. I'm not sure why, but I think his content is so, so valuable for the community. But yeah, I think his content is like unmatched on YouTube. There's no one that's doing good technical WebGL content like him. And he also has so many videos. And so if you're having a hard time with like a WebGL animation, I highly recommend you check out his channel and you might find an answer to your question in like his 100 videos. And I think he also has a course on awards. I haven't bought it, but check it out if you're interested. And then we have Maxim Heckel's blog. Now talking about inspiration, Maxim's blog is the inspiration for my own blog. When I saw it at first, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I need to do something similar to that. And so I used part of his design system because it's just so good for my own blog. And honestly, his blog is the pound for pound best blog on web animation out there. Honestly, it's the best. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't post a lot, but all his posts, you can expect them to be absolute fire. I've read all of them from top to bottom. It's just so good. So yeah, I think his blog is unmatched to my own knowledge. And so definitely check it out if you like to read about web animation. And then we have Fabio Ottaviani. I hope that's how you pronounce his name, but this guy is crazy good. And specifically, what I like about him is his SVG animations. Like I'm not super used to uh, using SVG filters and things like that to create my web animations. So I'm like simply like astonished and like stunned by the way he makes animations with them. To be honest, it's amazing to me. I find that absolutely fascinating. And a lot of his content is on either Twitter or CodePen. So highly recommend checking him out if you're interested in learning more about SVGs. And even if you like web animation in general, he also does that. And yeah, one thing I like about his content specifically is if you're tired of making animations with GSAP and firm motion and you want to create something that's a bit more advanced, but you're not ready to hop into 3JS and into shaders, then like the SVG filters and the way he does his animation is kind of a middle ground between like the easy animations and like the super advanced animations. So highly recommend you check him out. And then we have Ksenia Kodrashova. I'm sorry. <laughs> so a bit similar to Fabio, her content is really accessible. And I feel like she thinks about beginner in mind when she does her animation and she writes her code because it's super clear and super understandable. And so I highly like what she does. But what I like specifically about her animations is her creativity. It's not even her technique or how she does it, even though it's really good. It's the final result of her animation that I specifically like. Like they're not the most complicated or the most sophisticated in their implementation, but the end result is just so unique. And I can tell right away that she's an artist because her animations are extremely unique and she really thinks outside the box. And with like a super simple technical implementation, she comes up with like a super nice, animation that fits with its own vibe and all of that. So yeah, she's a great source of inspiration for me and I highly look up to her for someone that's like really able to uh, think outside the box and create like a super nice concept, like a super nice artistic concept with programming. And then we have Sebastian Leg. And this guy is an absolute monster of creative development. He has a YouTube channel that's super popular and you can check him out. And I believe his YouTube channel nothing compares to it when it comes to creative development in general. Like Yuri does a lot of WebGL, but this guy, he doesn't do anything that's um, related to the web industry, but he still does creative development in the sense that he creates super nice animations with programming. And oftentimes he uses C Sharp instead of doing it on the web. And so the concepts and his approach is a bit different than how we do it on the web. But I find that particularly interesting personally because I can learn from like a new perspective on making animations and I always find something super useful. And the guy is just like so smart. His IQ is like off the chart. He sometimes uses like mathematical functions from like scientists and all of that. To me, it's fascinating. And on top of that, his videos are the kind of video where you can just put them on, sit back, relax, and like his tone is super calm and you can just make yourself a cup of tea and it's just highly inspiring and also super informative. And now I want to talk about some books that really helped me for creative animation, weirdly. And unfortunately, not a lot of them are nice when it comes to creative animations or that I can relate for creative animations, but there's a couple ones out there that are really good. So the first ones that I have here are 
the books by Robert C. Martin. And so those books are really good uh, classic books. You probably heard of them in the world of programming. So I just highly recommend uh, his book. I've read them a while ago and that's where I created my own foundation for my programming skills. And it's just so good for the price. Honestly, the content inside of it is crazy. And he also has another book called The Clean Coder. And this one is more about like the soft skills of a programmer. And this one is more about like the hard skills. So you have both and you can learn a lot about this. And even when I reread those books now, I always find some hidden gems and some super informative content. And so I highly recommend and I can apply this knowledge to like everything, not only web animation, but also like more corporate website or like web apps and things like that. And then another book that I like is The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. And this book is incredible. It's not related to programming. It's more related to the creative process. And I personally have a really hard time uh, finding good books on that subject. And I've read a lot of them and they're not really applicable, not really sharp, but this one is amazing. It came out also recently, I think last year or maybe this year. And it's just amazing. Like Rick Rubin, if you know music, I'm sure you know him. Know how to work a soundboard? No, I have no technical ability. And I know nothing about music. If you don't know him, he's, his job is to basically help artists uh, create music and assist them in their crea own creative process. And like this guy is super spiritual and kind of really helped me um, with my own connection to my artistic process. And so when making creative animations, um, you need to think outside the box when making those animations. And so it's not a technical book. It won't help you for your technique, but it really helps you think you know outside the box and try to see uh, how you want to approach your own animations and try to create something unique, something that's true to yourself, things like that. Highly recommend this book. So that was it for my list. I think I made a bit more than 10 points. I have about 12 or 13, and I hope you at least found one that you didn't already know. And if you did and you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.